Welcome to my CEH version 9 review questions 81 through 85. Alright, what's a rainbow table? Keep in mind when you hash a password, that password is always attached to that hash, or more specifically that hash is attached to that password. So a rainbow table is pretty much just a lookup table with a bunch of hashes with the known passwords that are associated with that hash. So for example, password. Password is always going to have the same hash. So I may not know your password, but if I see that hash and I recognize that hash to be the hash for password, more than likely your password is password. So a rainbow table pre-computes, it's a pre-computed table for reverse cryptography hash functions normally used for cracking password hashes. So the important part here is understanding that if we want to mitigate the risk of having our passwords uh, vulnerable to a rainbow table attack, we would include things like password salting. Basically, we're going to add in an additional string into our password, so it will be our password plus a random string for that hash value. That way, even if you have the hash value, you don't it's highly unlikely that you can guess the password and the random string for that salted question. Question two, when you're scanning with an IDS, normally IDSs, uh, you really can't look at TCP sync scans because an IDS picks up on those TCP sync scans. So if there's an IDS, you cannot use TCP sync. And again, that's a general statement. It all depends on what the IDS is configured for, but more common IDSs are configured to use or to pick up or alert on TCP sync scans. So if there's an IDS, automatically understand you probably cannot use TCP sync scans. Email attachments that are malicious typically are Trojans. For example, you may get a, hey, I need you to pay this invoice, and here's an attached zip file. More than likely, that's a Trojan attached to it, so that you, when you open the file, you now are infected with that Trojan, gaining access, having someone gain remote access to your machine, and so forth. In-map scanning. Understand that key areas of sorry the key switches for inmap sa sx sv tcp x scan an xmas scan or scan version know those switches know all of the inmap switch well not all of them but the common one that we've discussed uh, just because lots of inmap questions Lastly, it's a subnet question. Understand what that slash number means. That slash number is going to be the subnets. For example, if I want to scan everything between 0 and 255 in the fourth octet, I'm going to scan that slash 24. However, if I want to scan the first 128 devices, I'm going to use a slash 25. But keep in mind, if I do like a in-map scan of 10.0.0.1 slash 25, that's going to scan between 0 and 124. So if I'm looking for something in the 128 range, not going to work. I'd have to scan in-map 10.0.0.128 or pick a number through 128 through 255. Because again, those slash numbers do mean a grouping. So, let me grab my pen. If we want to scan in this range here, for example, in map 1000, and pick a number in that range, it will scan that range with that subnet mask. If we want, uh, if we have a slash 26 and we want to scan this guy, in map 1000. 128 slash 26 that will scan that range if I want to scan this range for example in map 10 0 0 192 slash 26 these slash numbers are the groupings 
keep that in mind. Understand your subnetting. That's important because there are a few questions within MAP that have you look at an output and they go, well, what network are you scanning? And if you don't understand the subnets, you can't really pick the network that you're scanning. If you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you.